Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. You're as good as your lost tweet. I like that statement. And today we're going to be talking about the eight simple ways just to make your social media work for your business. I know each and every one of us is probably reading or posting or commenting on something on social media while they're listening to this podcast. But do you actually know what it takes and it entails for you to actually engage with that comment and also to get people to engage with you? Now, let me tell you something. Using social media to promote your business doesn't have to be hard if you just follow the eight steps that I'm going to be talking about in this podcast today. Now, obviously, we all know um, how social media works. You post something, you twiddle your thumbs, and then you wait for people to like, comment, and share. And all of a sudden, you get so much money in your account, and you do it over and over again up until you're so rich and you don't even care about what you're going to be posting or how it's going to be affecting your audience. Well, I wish it was that easy. I wish it was that easy. Now, I'll tell you something. I'm very prominent in my social um, media, especially on Facebook, because I believe it to be a channel that I can actually identify my target audience and really clarify my message before I can unleash it out there into the whole world. Now, you might be surprised and thinking, wait a minute, isn't Facebook already your world? I'll tell you something. We usually have a group of people, maybe 250 people at any given time that are our absolute diehard fans. Now, those are the people you want to be trying out all your material on before you actually putting out, put it out in the, in the universe there where sometimes it will fall flat because people don't quite know who you are. So if you are like me and you really want to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable, I would sit back and really listen and take notes in this podcast here where we're talking about the eight um, simple ways to make social media work for your business. Now, in social media, you must not only engage but also engage consistently and meaningfully. People are not just going to follow you just because you've got a Twitter account or you've got an Instagram account, unless you're posing naked or half naked and you're showing people food. All right. But if you're a business, half of the things that we do is literally boring. My job is to tell other robots that I'm not a robot. And that is not fun at all. So that's why I take to social media to share my uh, hobbies, to share my pastimes, just so that I can connect with other people on so many different levels and on so many different topics. So you must not only engage, but you must be engaging consistently because people are busy. Everyone is out there trying to survive and make sense of the world around them. And your posts should be actually be enabling them to be, do, and have a happier existence. And if they're not, and if they're not offering value, then why would anyone bother to follow your content and even want to know about what your next move is going to be? So the key to building meaningful relationships is to literally join the conversation. What is the conversation that is happening in your audience mind right now? I'm not talking about join the religious conversations. I'm not talking about join the political conversations. I'm not talking about all of that stuff. How are you encouraging your prospects or your audience dreams? How are you justifying their failures? How are you confirming their suspicions? And how are you allaying with whatever fears they might have as human beings? And are you also helping them throw rocks at their enemies? So by reaching out to people in your community and responding to their comments, you actually set the agenda. You teach people how you want to be reached and you teach people your message and literally 
get them to know, like, and trust you. So I suggest that you pick one platform um, and then you just start with that. Okay, whether it's Facebook or maybe it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, or any other one of these, you know, uh, choices that are out there. Learn a little about the channels before you decide and figure out, are you going to be consistent enough in this channel? And is it readily available for you to contribute and create content consistently? All right. They do have different characteristics. All right. I always joke around to my clients and say, you know, Facebook, you can literally be looking at Facebook while you are sitting on the toilet. But LinkedIn is a profile that no matter where you are, you'd want to be wearing your pants because you feel like that's your, you know, professional uh, representation or profile. So, for example, uh, you know. Like I just mentioned about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is more popular in the business world and has a very large international following. So you want to be very careful because whatever you say, whatever you do on the internet is written in stone. All right. And while there are other platforms like Instagram, which is very visually orientated, is it going to be easy for you to just stop and snap um, a photo as you are going along in your day? And there are places like Twitter, which is very newsworthy, all right? And it, it's it's very quick and it has to be s small and succinct. You need to make sure that you are able to respond to your audience as and when they're speaking to you then. Otherwise, they move on and they go somewhere else. And I really, really resonate with Facebook. Even though they have issues with privacy and all of that stuff, that's not what we're there for. We're just there to identify our target market and use the social media platform to help us clarify our message while we are nurturing our audience. If you look at it that way, man, Facebook will be a gold mine and a happy place for you and your audience. Okay. So I think Facebook has many businesses, but their biggest approach is being very social so each of these um, platforms has a slightly different demography and i know you already know all of this stuff but it doesn't hurt to actually reiterate this information because some people go on to linkedin with the same face they had on the instagram and hope that people are going to respond it doesn't normally work like that. So most important of all, find out which a social media platform is the one where your customers or clients are actually spending a lot more time on because that's where you want to be. Okay. You can't go fishing for whales in a, in a fish pond. Okay. Or in a swimming pool. Guess what? You're not going to find them there. All right. So I'm hoping these tips are going to help you uh, craft a memorable social media presence, which is actually going to make it easy for people to connect with you, uh, buy from you and actually engage with you in such a way that is profitable for both parties involved. But one thing that you need to make sure you're doing while you're on social media, be authentic. All right. I'm not saying be authentic as in walk around being who you want to be, but define what authenticity means in your own words and what your clients or audience values. All right. Because we help consultants sell their business by driving leads, harvesting those leads and converting them into happy clients that pay, stay and refer. That's what my job is at Live Long Digital. Now, what I need to be doing is showcasing that I am also doing that. I am also practicing what I preach and I'm actually helping my clients by actually helping them. So be yourself. Share and tweet and post the things that actually interest you. Don't try to be what you think others want you to be. And don't work too hard to, to have everything perfect. Like if you would look through my social media posts, I'm always playing with my little girls. I'm wearing their stuff. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's who I am when the camera is not facing me. So I would want that my clients or the prospects that I'm dealing with uh, accept me for who I am and actually understand that this is who I want to be known as. And don't try and work hard to, to be something that you're not because you will get caught out. You will get caught out. All right. So whatever you do and whatever you're going to be put up or, or whatever you're going to be trying to portray, you need to 
gravitate towards that and be consistent. Otherwise, you break the trust with your customers. And remember, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest, whatever, you know, matters to you and how your customers connect with you, who you are is who you should present the world as. Because if you try to be something else, then guess what? It will be grand opening, grand closing. So post things that genuinely interest you and things that you genuinely stand by. Because whatever you are doing, you are allaying the fears of your audience and you actually have to help them throw rocks at their enemies. So you need to know your target audience so much that whatever you will do and however you present yourself will be in such a way that they say, hey, People like us do things like this, all right? And once you're on there, engage, engage, engage. Now, the primary goal of social media is to build relationships and add value, okay? We get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. So this is where most people fall down. They work so hard to create and publish content and, they just, and then they push it out, but then they fail to step in and engage with the audience if they've engaged with your stuff. Remember, when you are in front of an audience, you are literally like a celebrity who is walking through a parade and people are giving you their books or t-shirts to sign an autograph for. Can you imagine if you're that person and then you, you snub off people and you don't engage with them or you don't take the pen to sign that autograph? Will people like you after that? They won't, all right? People also want to be paid for their participation, all right? So whenever you are engaging with people, you are offering your audience participation trophies, and they will do it again and again and again, and it becomes a habit. And you want to be creating that habit of following and seeking you out whenever you don't show up on your Facebook. Now, do you have people that if you don't show up on your um, social media will miss you when you're gone? Do you have people like that? Now, that means you want to be talking to people. You want to be understanding them because those are the people that are going to be paying you eventually or spreading your word on your behalf when you can't reach their networks. All right. Well, that does not mean that you talk to people as if you in a condescending uh, manner, you know, that means don't talk to people, but you know, and, 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 and just post without you reaching back and looking for feedback. Talk with people and really engage. You know, respond, respond to comments, jump into these communities, let people feel like they're speaking to a human, not some, you know, higher person that is untouchable. Because when you're untouchable to people, then you can't reach their wallets. All right, so share your perspective and your point of view because people gravitate towards those um, that they feel akin to. And there are so many aspects that you can reach out to people, maybe through sharing your family, your, your voice in the community, how you are also helping other people with their vocation, all of those things. And I remember when I was watching and listening to, um, I think it was Gary V, and he mentioned something to the effect that document and don't produce. Sometimes we feel like we just have to keep producing content, producing content without any context. Guess what? Overproduced content tends to turn people off on social media. And especially after COVID, they know that each and every one of us only has the phone and you can't go to a studio to actually edit your, your videos or anything like that. So if you overproduce your stuff on social media, people will just be like, meh, and they actually start looking for errors, okay? So figure a medium role. Obviously, you don't want to put out boring content and, you know, bad quality type stuff, but people can tell what has been home produced and what has been overly produced. Plus, you need so much content, video, audio, blog posts, quotes, pictures, etc. that most people don't have time and resources to put all of that into production and make it look fancy. And people don't care. People don't care as long as they know how you can help them. 
All right, so you might spend five hours trying to edit a three minute video. Whereas in that five hours, you could have actually done maybe 30 minutes doing the video, 30 minutes, polishing it up a little bit. And that's already an hour and then use the rest of the hour to engage the rest of the four hours to engage with the people that are commenting and liking on that video. Like I said, people don't care. They're just worried about what is it that you can do for them. All right. And they don't care about what you created last week. They, they care when your content comes in today. Is it relevant? Is it on point? And is it helping them make sense of the world around them? They want to get to know you. They want to experience your day with, you know, your day with them. And they really want to relate to you. All right. So as a result, it's much more powerful to document your life in real time. And that's why stories are important. If you don't like it, guess what? Just wait 24 hours and it's deleted. All right. And it doesn't take a bunch of time for you to just take se 10 seconds of you just snapping a, a, a story and people will get to know, oh, wait a minute. Today he's not answering the phone because he's probably recording a podcast. So things like that are very important and let people see how you are also, you know, tackling the things that you want to help them with. And once you're in there, once you're giving all that value, do not try and oversell. People like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to, you know? Have you ever been to a party and, you know, there's that guy at a party who always wants you to, wants to sell you something that they're doing. It's either the network marketing stuff or sell their insurance or, you know, sell their accounting packages. Don't be that guy. That guy is boring. That guy is always avoided at parties and people are always seeking to refresh their drink just because they can't stand a person who's overselling. People like buying stuff but they don't like to be sold to. So get to know people, engage honestly and join in the conversation, but don't try and dominate it. No matter how much of knowledge you have or how much experience you have, let people come to you in their own space. All right. Giving advice and offering suggestions will make you seem helpful, knowledgeable and trustworthy. And that's what people are always looking for. They're always looking for people that can help them make sense of the world around them. So get people to ask you about yourself. Don't overimpose. Rather than telling them about yourself, you know, they'll be more receptive if you're having a conversation with anyone and not speaking at them. All right. And once you're doing that within your social media, you really want to commit to engaging with people. I usually call it an hour of power. So this is what I do every single day in the morning. I wake up and I try and reach out to 10 new people that I've never met or that I've never heard of to add them to my audience. All right. And guess what? Getting started with Facebook and audiences, is it's super easy and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you can literally do by the end of this podcast. Opening an account costs you nothing. Posting is obviously for free. I don't know if you get an invoice whenever you post onto social media. In a few minutes, you can be up and running. Within an hour, you can actually reach the rest of the world. Every 3 billion people that, are, that engage with Facebook every single day, if you've got the money, time, and effort, you can actually reach all those people. You can connect with your friends, co-workers, customers, people you went to kindergarten with. But I want you to spend one hour a day to engage with the community and the people that are reaching out to you. That's it. Because those people could be doing it somewhere else. Just thank them by giving them your attention. That's it. And one hour a day at zero cost to you, you can literally build an army. Now, the cost in time and money is negligible about this, but the potential payback and exposure and attention is incalculable. You never know when somebody is going through a hard time and you just maybe mention their name or respond back to them because a lot of people are going through hard places. You know, they, the world changed and turned upside down for a lot of people. Be that light and shining armor for them, all right? And in the meantime, well, 
don't overdo it and you want to make sure that you're monitoring and protecting your brand in the process just make sure you're you're regularly checking out their sites feeds um and pages that discuss your industry product or service look for posts that mention your company and respond to complaints or, or comments and using these opportunities to actually engage build trust and grow your brand and you can collect market research and in, you know, if you pay attention, you really get ahead of potential, uh, you know, problems that are happening within the marketplace there. So don't sleep on connecting and engaging with people because these are the people that carry the credit cards, which we will be billing at the end of each month. And we're calling that revenue. Why? Because our businesses are now profitable and enjoyable. And I'm value your viewership and listenership right now because you know you could be doing something else or maybe you're at the gym or you're walking and you're listening to me right now and i'm really hoping that this is valuable to you and um just depending on where you are make sure you're subscribing to um you know the online prosperity experience because i viscerally believe that your business should be profitable and enjoyable and one thing you should also do for yourself is invest in sound right just like you're listening to this podcast yeah you know if you're going to be posting video or audio content just keep a couple of things in mind even though your color or background or production values may not be you know perfect good sound is very important okay because people are probably listening while they're doing other things so make sure you've got a microphone and you've got quality sound and wherever you produce your video or a podcast be sure with the videos there's enough light for people to see you clearly and you're not just um you know appearing as if somebody is talking from a hole and if you are going to be doing a podcast just make sure you've got best microphone you know, just so that your voice is loud and clear. You don't need to spend a lot of money, but this is one detail you should actually invest in because sometimes people are just scrolling through and they have no idea, um, you know, what, what it is that, that you're saying until they can hear you loud and clear, all right? And with all your social media posts for them to bear, um, you know, uh, value for you, tell people how to reach you. Oh, give people a call to action. People won't do anything until they've been told what to do. So make sure your fans know how to get a hold of you. And if possible, give them your web address, email address, phone number, your social media handles. And if possible, try and use the same handle on many social media platforms because one person might not be very happy on Facebook and they want to just, you know, find you and connect with you on instagram so just make sure you're e you're easily foundable and social media offers you a chance to build massive sales force where people can share your content on your behalf and this can be more effective than anyone you can put on your stuff because this is where word of mouth actually comes in place and i call it word of mouse word of mouse where people are clicking and sharing your stuff all right you could have a massive sales force but if people have been influenced or told to purchase a product by somebody they know like and trust guess what they won't ask any questions so you now have a cry crowd forced um, um sales force which there'll be people out there talking and spreading your word i call them sneezes right i call them sneezes because they're spreading the idea virus that you have or the product or service um that you're offering there you know people are much more likely to trust your brand and make a purchase based on a friend's referral than by listening to anything that you have to say so whatever you're going to be doing just be sure to make sure that your social media is working for you and you're not working for it all right and using social media to promote your business doesn't have to be hard if you just follow these eight steps thank you for joining us today if you have any questions let's continue the conversation in the live long digital community become a live long digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As 
as you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.